So this is the rough agenda. So as I said, there is no real structure. So I'll just start. Okay, so I will first show you a couple of scripts what I use. And uh, then I will talk about the, the multiple different types of parameters inside Oracle. Right? So there are actually quite a few different types of parameters in, in Oracle. Okay, and now we go to SQL Plus. So, welcome. Okay, uh, let's see how to do this. Um, let's say I just picked a random parameter. And by the way, as the description said, this session is not about explaining what the actual parameters do, all thousands of them, right? It's actually about uh, uh, explaining how parameters work. And you know, there are a few things we, we need to be we to know, know about it. So the first thing is, I mean, I'm sure everybody knows this, right? So if you don't know this command, then you might be in the wrong place right now. So, <laughs> uh, so show parameter, right? So when anybody asks you or when, when in an OCP exam guide or exam, somebody asks you that how do, how do I show Oracle instance parameters, right? What's the way to show Oracle instance parameters? So the first thing which comes into my mind is, hey, show parameter, right? Okay. Or select, you know, value from with dollar parameter where name equals this, for example, right? So technically, this is the wrong answer. These commands don't show you instance parameters. These show you session parameters. Every session can have their own parameters. So, uh, so when you enable SQL trace, you would actually see that show parameter command internally it queries V dollar parameter, right? And V dollar parameter shows you session parameters, which may not be the same what the instance level values are. So actually, there are. There is a new, there is another view. It's not a new one, but it's just an unknown one called V dollar system parameter. So V dollar system parameter is actually the one which shows you the instance parameter, instance wide parameters, right? So basically, when you log on, you will get whatever uh, you know, whatever parameters are in V dollar system parameter. They are copied to your session, right? But now maybe you have a logon trigger or some application changes some parameters with alter session, right? Then it will only change here for your session and not in system wide. So technically, when anybody asks, you know, in, in the OCP exam or something that how do you show instance parameters, then the answer is V dollar system parameter, not V dollar parameter. And, and let me show you that. So, you know, when I say alter session set, uh, I pick this random parameter for demo. Let's set it to 66, right? You see, this parameter has changed for me now, right? I changed it in this session and it's 66. But when I query it in the system wide, in the instance level, right? Obviously it hasn't changed because I did not use alter system, okay? So, uh, uh, and so, uh, 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 so the, the system-wide parameter has not changed. And let me let me check the session-wide parameter from another session, just you know, for completeness. I will open a new window, and I log in. Right. So in the other session, this parameter is not sixty-six. It's, it's still zero, right? Because this other session you know, still has, was copied the system by parameter, which was zero. So, uh, so uh, I just wanted to, you know, show you that for a start, that, you know, that for, for years and years and in the documentation often, uh, you know, you always saw that just do a show parameter or use V dollar parameter and you see the system wide parameters. Actually not. You will only see your own sessions parameters. So by the way, when I describe V dollar parameter, right? You see all this 
parameter name and its value and so on, but you don't see C here. You know, V$ parameter does not allow you to peek in, inside other sessions parameter values. So, so uh, I will get, I already see there is a question that how do you peek into other session parameter values? So uh, there is a way for that, uh, way for doing that, but I'll, I'll get back there, right? So what it really means is that whenever you log on, you know, if there is a problem with your report and now you log on as a, as a, as a DBA, right? Just to see which parameters are in effect. If you, if you say show parameter, or if you query with our parameter, you're not seeing what the other session is using, or you're not seeing what the system-wide value is. You only are seeing your own session's values. And if your logon trigger or something has changed something, you will see different values than, than the system-wide values are. So V$ parameter and show parameter only show your own session's parameter values, really. Okay, and just to make things more interesting, there is actually a view called V$ parameter 2 and also V$ system parameter 2 as well. So if you wonder what these are, so, so you know, so uh, this is another, let's see if I, if I do show parameter, let's see if I have, a, uh, I only have one control file, uh, let's see if I have anything else. Um, So basically, basically what this parameter 2 and system parameter 2 are doing is that when you have um, some parameters which have multiple values, you see when you have, I only have one control file here, but if you have, uh, uh, if you have uh, three control files, then uh, uh, V$ parameter would show you all these three files uh, in this line and separate it by comma. But V$ parameter 2 would actually show you each value in a on a separate line. So, and that was useful back in 8.0 days or something where the V$ parameter uh, itself, you know, the uh, regular V$ parameter uh, uh, without the number 2. Uh, there used to be a bug that when you had multiple values for a parameter, it only showed you the first one. But then they fixed this bug. So V$ parameter now shows the values on one line uh, separated by comma, while V$ parameter 2 would return a separate row for each value. Uh, let's see if there are any parameters uh, in V$ parameter 2. Where there is more than one value. Uh, apparently not uh, in, in my instance. But if you have multiple control files, for example, or, or you have, uh, you know, multiple, let, let's actually, actually change this. So I'll just say alter system set uh, user dump test equals this. I'm doing something wrong here. Ah, sorry, I think it was uh, the other way that I gotta put. Sorry, uh, not user dump test. So that's what I meant by saying that there is no structure and no preparation. Um, so trace, uh, not user, uh, uh, UTL file there. So this is what I wanted to change. Right. Alter system set equals, let's set it to these two. Let's see what happens. Um, so I'm actually too lazy right now. I would have to do the restart and so on that, uh, uh, because it's a security feature, we shouldn't change it. But basically, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna waste time on it. Basically, if you have multiple values, like multiple control files, 
multiple, you know, UTL file layers, then V$2 parameter two would actually show you one row for each. Not that important to know, but but if you next time you wonder why is there V$2 parameter and parameter two, then then uh, uh, you'll know. Okay. So anyway, um, uh, so where where do we go from here? Um, I'll I'll show you where parameters are kept as well. So that's actually pretty interesting. So SGA stat just queries V$ SGA stat, right? And and um, there is this script called KSMSP again, which if you want to learn more about this X dollar KSMSP, then uh, uh, you know view the view one of the previous hacking sessions about shared pool. This is a fairly heavy script, so it's dangerous for production, but good enough for research, right? So this actually shows us how many chunks of memory uh, are allocated for some specific uh, reason for the shared pool. Okay, so you see uh, we have. Uh, now let's see. Let's see how many sessions we have uh, logged on right now. Select count star from V dollar session. So that's the rough session count. Uh, if you have recursive sessions, then the actual number is bigger. But I don't think we have any right now. Uh, all right. So, um, so we have twenty-seven. Let's just also check select star from V dollar resource limit. That shows the correct session count. I mean, even if you have recursive sessions. Ah, okay, apparently we do have a bunch of uh, recursive sessions. I guess they are cached. So that's a yet another topic. I'm not going to go there. Uh, <laughs> so if you if you want to learn about recursive sessions, then Google for recursive sessions, tunnel Potter. They are not shown in V$ session, and I wrote a script for that. Anyway, so back back to the previous topic. Okay, uh, so let me just uh, go back here. I just want to show how, where they are kept. Uh, I don't want to drive it very complex. Okay, so right now I have a, um, a there is a, a thing called parameter table. The size is that, that there is a chunk size. So apparently there are 25 chunks of memory allocated from shared pool for parameter table. And they are you know, 0 to 1 kilobytes in size. And for the same reason for the parameter table, there are more chunks which are 1 to 2K in size, 250 of them. Let me log on with one more session. and I want to show you what happens. Okay, so now I logged on with one more session. Okay. Okay, you see, uh, previously this value was 25. So uh, now I logged on with one more session and actually I have I went from 25 to 28, so let me scroll up. So it used to be 25, right? Now it's, uh, uh, and then it went to 28. And there are some bigger, a bit bigger chunks which went from 250, you know, total that many bytes to 280, total that many bytes. So basically what I just, and let me log out again. So I log out from this session and I also log out from the second session. You know, I had three sessions logged on here. Now I only have one. So when I look into the same chunk allocations, you see the number of allocations dropped to 24, right? So, so basically what this means is that when you log on with a new session, you will have to allocate memory from shared pool, shared pool for your session. Uh, why would I need to allocate memory for every session for parameters? Well, it's because you may want to change 
your session values only with all their session, right? You may have a thousand sessions logged on and some of them want to have their own values for parameters. So, so where, where do they keep them? Well, they keep it in shared pool, right? So, um, uh, I don't know why they keep it in shared pool in the sense that, you know, uh, in, in dedicated connection mode, you could actually keep it in, in private memory as well. But maybe it's just done for, uh, so that in case of the multi-threaded server or, or the shared servers, you can, uh, you know, that all the processes could access that session's parameters. But anyway, so I wanted to show that, um, you know, when you log on, you will allocate uh, memory from shared pool for, uh, for, for, uh, for parameter values, right? So these are the regular parameters. So, uh, so I'm not going to talk about the shared pool implications. I think I, I covered it the last time, but basically, um, you know, that's another example that why bad connection management is bad, where, you know, if you create a new connection, you know, you log in and log out for every single query you run. Well, you know, you will have this process startup overhead, but you will also have the shared pool overhead that, you know, you constantly allocate some chunks of memory for your parameters and then you run your query. And when you log out, you will just free them again. That will also cause shared pool latch contention. But anyway, back to the parameter topic. So as the parameter values uh, live in the shared pool, it's actually possible you view some of them. So, uh, uh, so but I will get there. Okay, so, so far I wanted to show that when, whenever you run show parameter or, or use v$ parameter, you will see your own sessions parameters, right? You're not seeing the system-wide ones, nor uh, or the system by default, so to speak, nor, uh, nor somebody else. Okay, so um, I'll just look into the agenda and see where to go, go next. Okay, I think the logical next thing is uh, actually to uh, talk about these parameters which we can uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, which are visible to other sessions as well. So, uh, uh, but I got to introduce this. So I will, I will do a little example. So I will, I will start uh, with this. That uh, if I change a parameter then and uh, run some query and I change the parameter again and run it, why do I have different child cursors? Okay, so uh, let me just log out and log in just to have the default values. Okay, so um, again, I'll, I'll use this just for, I think I used this one. So I use this uh, just for hacking demoing parameters. All right, so let's run the query. So uh, select demo one count star from dual. Okay, I just run it a few few times, and uh, let's now check what is the hash value of the query. So this this little hash script shows me the previous previously executed query's hash value, right? So it's this is the SQL ID, ID and this is the child number, right? I run it once more, it's still the same, right? We reuse that cursor, okay? So I can list all child cursors for that SQL ID. And you see, we only have one child, you know, child number zero. Even though we soft parsed and executed this four times, right? So we still have one child cursor. All right, and now let's do this. I'll just say, alter session set optimizer index caching equals one. You see, it used to be zero and now I just set it to one, you know, really minor difference, right? Uh, because the max value is 100, I think. So, uh, so uh, and now I will run this query again. I ran the same query again, exactly the same text, you know, the SQL ID is the same, you see, the SQL ID is the same of the, of the last query, but the 
child number is one. It used to be zero, now it's one. Uh, and the question is why? So uh, um, let's just see what's going on here. So if I look into SQL ID, we have child zero and child one. So child zero was parsed and executed four times and child one is executed only once. So now you might have the question that why do we have a new child cursor here? So there is a view called V dollar SQL shared cursor for this. It actually exists since 9i or 9.2. And I have written a little script called non-shared where you pass in the SQL ID and you'll just say uh, that tell me why, I don't remember whether this is needed here, but basically tell me why we have created multiple child cursors. Okay, so child number zero was created, well, there is no specific um, uh, problem why it was created because, you know, it was the first cursor, right? It had to be parsed. But, so this, this stuff comes from the V dollar SQL shared cursor. So this row here tells me that this child cursor number one was created because there was a mismatch between the optimizer settings in my session and in the previous cursor. So basically, when, whenever I do a soft parse, soft parse means a library cache lookup. You know, I'm looking up a cursor based on the SQL ID and, and the text, right? So, and when I find one cursor, for example, then I will examine this cursor, this child cursor. I will examine it and I will, I, I will check what were the optimizer parameter values which were used for compiling that child cursor. So basically, whatever optimizer parameter values were in effect when you compiled and parsed this child cursor, these values are actually stored together with that child. So the next time when I have changed a parameter value in my session, you know what happened in my case, I changed this parameter value. We looked up this cursor, we found child number zero, but then we saw that, oops, we cannot use it. Because, uh, because there is one, at least one optimizer parameter, which is different between the cursor and, and my session, right? And that's why this cursor number one was created because uh, um, all the previous cursors, which we examined, uh, uh, they had an optimizer mismatch, right? And actually, uh, starting from 11.202, there is an XML type field, which actually tells us a bit more information as well. Uh, it actually tells us which parameter we are talking about. Optimizer index caching. It's actually possible to trace it uh, as well, but that's, that event is too, too undocumented. Okay. Uh, Dean asked that, can I show the contents for non-shared? Uh, all my scripts are downloadable, you know, where I, where I am, um, uh, uh, where I uh, uh, mentioned, you know, from my website. So this is actually uh, uh, basically uh, uh, how I format it in, in this uh, nice way. I used Tom Kite's print tab code. I just customized it a bit. And uh, basically the query, what I, what, I, what I pass into that is this. Just select from me dollar SQL shared cursor where SQL ID is whatever parameter I pass into it. And the customization is, um, so, um, okay, so the customization is here, that uh, what I added, that I don't print out all columns in this tabular format, like Tom's script does, but I only print out these, uh, uh, these columns where, um, where the, um, flag value is not no. So whenever the flag is yes, this means is that this particular reason, uh, this particular uh, column was the reason why this child cursor was created. 
But anyway, so, so it's dynamic. So if there are more than one, one reason, then it shows multiple rows for this uh, query. So for this child cursor, sorry. Okay, but anyway, so this, again, I kind of um, uh, went into library cache topics, but uh, um, I will have now a sip of Red Bull first, but, but now I would leave you for the, with the question for a, for a few seconds that, uh, that how does Oracle know or, or how does Oracle, you know, how did Oracle find out that, you know, that this optimizer index caching value was different from my session? I mean, where is this information kept? Or I kind of already mentioned what, how it, it's done, but, uh, um, but let me have a, a sip of Red Bull first. Um, my brain is kind of slowing down. It's evening already. Okay, I am back. Mm, so, uh, uh, Marcus, I see a question. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that later on. Um, all right. So, um, how does Oracle know this? So, let's uh, look into VDollar SQL. So this is VDollar SQL. So there is one column. Um, optimizer n in VDollar SQL. So let's just do this. So uh, um, select select SQL ID child number uh, SQL. I'm uh, sorry. Opti where SQL ID equals this. Uh, I think, you know, I, we got into, uh, you see, I queried from VDollar SQL, right? And, uh, and uh, uh, now I only have one row. The child number zero is left. Where is the child number one? I used to have two, two lines here. <laughs> So this is a yet another issue, what you got to be aware of when you research things. Uh, you see, when you, when you run a query only once, you see, when you run a query only once, then you pin its memory chunks twice. Because the first time you run the query, which is not in cache at all, the first time you pin its memory chunks uh, for hard parts and for loading the contents in there, and then the second time you pin it in shared mode, you actually execute uh, the query, uh, cursor, right? But how shared pool works is that if you have pinned a chunk of memory only twice, then Oracle thinks that this is a um, transient chunk. It thinks that this, hey, this is only used once. You know, somebody must be not using bind variables and, and, and uh, you know, I'm not going to keep this in shared pool for long enough. So this chunk will be in the transient end of the LRU list, okay? So, uh, uh, so uh, and, and this actually, actually affected my demo right now because, uh, let me just go back. You see, I used to have two lines here, right? Or two child cursor. One child cursor, the number zero, I executed four times, but the second I only executed once, right? So these chunks were only pinned twice, and uh, and share pool thought that hey, this is a rec uh, this is a transient cursor. It will just flush it out because nobody it's not reused. But the moment you execute it once more, when the chunks are executed, when the chunks are pinned three times or more, then this then Oracle sees that hey, this query was executed more than once, right? So therefore, it must be something uh, which which we want to reuse. And it puts it into the uh, recurrent side of the LRU list. So therefore, it doesn't flush it out that, as easily. And what happened here is that you see exactly, we had child number zero with four executions and child number one with one execution. And it's only, it's only uh, you know, this is only pinned twice. Oracle doesn't think it's, it's a frequently used thing. And that's why now when I ran all the other queries here, Oracle just threw out my, 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 uh, my um, cursor number one because it, think, it thought nobody needs it. So let's get back to this. So let me just run this 
uh, sorry about this. So let me just run this, uh, you know, three, three more times. And now when I query the So now when I query this, uh, uh, you know, V$dollar SQL, I see I still have child number zero and child number one as well. But now it's ex parsed and executed multiple times. So, uh, so, um, uh, so it, it won't get kicked out as easily. All right. Yet another thing which may affect your tests. Okay. And uh, what I wanted to show you is, uh, is this. So, so uh, I queried this optimizer environment field. So I could actually scan through, you see, and this is, this is displayed in hex. It's a long value. It, it, it probably is longer than 2000 characters. You know, it was, it was raw, raw um, data type 2000 characters, uh, you know, shown here, but it's probably is longer uh, internally. It's just Oracle doesn't support the raw data type, which is longer than 2000 bytes. Right, and so it's two thousand bytes actually, not characters. So, so uh, yeah, because this is shown in hex. So, but you see, it's a long value. So somewhere here there is a difference. And then I look into the hash value here. You see, it's different. So actually, Oracle makes it easier for for itself as well that uh, you know it first compares the hash value that uh, you know of this is a hash value of all of these um, uh, optimizer parameter values which were used when you parse the child cursor, right? But you see from this, if the hash value is different, you immediately know that, hey, uh, some optimizer parameter value in this cursor is different from that other cursor, right? But basically what I wanted to tell you is that, um, that the big news sort of is that when, when we talk about parameters, then yes, we have instance level parameters which are kept in shared pool. And then we have, uh, uh, then we have uh, uh, session level parameters which are also kept in shared pool. You know, they're the sessions parameters. And then some of these parameters are copied inside each child cursor. So basically, if you have 10,000 child cursors in the, in the library cache, you will actually have 10,000 copies of the optimizer environment, uh, uh, you know, uh, values, which were in effect when that particular child cursor was compiled. And this is how Oracle knows, you know, when I run the non-shared again. Uh, by the way, non-shared is not fully reliable. So in this case, when I re recompiled the cursor, this reason code went away. Um, let me just show. So this is the correct output. So it, it's a bug. So Oracle hasn't fully figured it out. Um, so, uh, but basically this is a, when you don't hit this bug, you, you will see this. But basically that how does Oracle know that there is a mismatch between you know, the existing cursor and my session parameter values. Basically, uh, whenever you do a soft parse and you look up, you walk through the existing cursors. When you find an existing cursor where the SQL ID matches yours and, you know, where the SQL text matches yours, then you cannot reuse the cursor just yet. You have to do a bunch of checks, like some authentication checks and stuff like that, plus also that whether the optimizer parameter values inside that cursor, you know, the previous cursor, whether they match exactly these values in my session, right? And how Oracle does this check, it, it, uh, it just compares, it just compares your session level optimizer environment parameters with uh, whatever is stored in that cursor. And now you might ask that, why on the earth would I want to do that? I mean, why, why, why do I have to recompile a new child cursor when I change optimizer parameters? Well, isn't that the point, right? You, whenever you change optimizer parameters, you want to make something faster, right? 
you know, things may go faster because that optimizer parameter uh, forces you to compile a new execution plan, right? You change a parameter because you want a new execution plan or a better one, right? But if you reuse the old cursor, you know, if you reuse the old cursor, you will reuse the old plan, right? You want to have a new plan, right? Therefore, whenever you change optimizer parameters and if there is not, not an existing cur such cursor in cache already, Oracle compiles a new one because, you know, you want a new plan, which hopefully, hopefully is better. So that's why this overhead is needed. And that's why soft parses are pretty expensive. You know, soft parse is not only just some sort of a hash table lookup by SQL ID. There is much more stuff going on. So basically, um, basically um, every child cursor holds a copy of the optimizer parameters, yeah, which were in effect in your session when you compiled that child cursor. And it's used for determining whether we can reuse the old cursor or we, sh or we should compile a new one. Okay, so, uh, Luis, yes, I'm gonna get there as well. So let me look into, so I'm gonna do, uh, we will get back to this topic, we will continue here. But uh, now I will take like a, a, like a five minute detour. Let's look into how many parameters we have. So, So we have 344 parameters in V dollar parameter. So let's do this. Uh, I will just select is basic. So that's just, just something that appeared in 10 G. Um, not too interesting, but, um, but for completeness, I will show that um, group by is basic. So in 10G, they actually, uh, well, in, the, in an attempt to even simplify more, uh, they actually came up with a, uh, a list of parameters which are kind of the basic parameters, that this is the stuff what you want to configure or may want to configure when you set up the database. But everything else you should leave as it is. So basically, um, Stuff like SGA target and so on. These are the basic ones. Oh. So uh, there is a little script called, if you have forgotten about it, there is a little script called HTML that I use uh, for formatting the results into HTML, you know, if it wraps. But basically, these are the basic parameters like the processes, sessions. Uh, you know, DB block size and so on. And, you know, in the ideal world, you should not need to set any other parameter ever, right? In the ideal world, okay? Uh, but, you know, I must say Oracle has done a very good job nowadays. So remember in Oracle 7.3 and 8.0 and so on, you had to tune a lot of parameters if your instance was big enough. But right now it actually is pretty auto tune, I mean, pretty, well working, unless you run something like SAP or PeopleSoft where they really force you to use these parameters, what they have used for their testing, you know, all these little un undocumented ones. So, but let's get, let's get back. So, uh, okay, so when I do this group by, you know, we have like 344 parameters total. 30 are considered basic, 314 are considered advanced. But these are the documented parameters. If you want to actually see all the undocumented ones as well, then, you know, then we should look into X dollar KS PPI. Because, because, I mean, the X dollar KS PPI includes the basic parameters. I mean, it includes the, you know, the, the basic documented ones, advanced documented ones, and also, you know, all undocumented ones. And undocumented ones are the ones which uh, begin with an underscore, right? You see, again, a way to research this. I mean, how do I know this stuff, right? So I've re researched it. So I have a little script called uh, 
uh, v, which shows me it uses v dollar fixed view definition uh, view, and it shows me the contents of v dollar views. So, and let's see what v dollar parameter does. Right. So here is a condition which says uh, this. So this condition here uh, is the one which filters out all undocu undocumented parameters. So you see, it, it looks into uh, into underscore. So um, uh, whenever um, whenever there is a first underscore, whenever the parameter name starts with an underscore, then it will filter it out. So in reality, in this version 11.202, we have that many parameters. In 11.203, we have uh, 2,800 or something. Well, even more. So we are going to reach 3,000 parameters soon. Okay. So uh, and then now there is a question that what is the x x dollar KSPPI? Is it a session or system by parameter? So. Um, External KSPPI is actually uh, actually this is just the, where the parameter names are stored, and this is where the values are stored. So K, KSP means kernel service parameter something, and CV CV means current value. So this is the current value in the session. So it's the session value. But if I look into the V dollar system parameter. Then uh, you see V dollar system parameter uh, uses KSPP SV, which is the system value. Again, you know, I'm not so just look into how the script called V works. So, uh, um, and so uh, uh, you know, you, you can peek inside V dollar views yourself. That's one way how I research things, right? You look into where do these values actually come from, and well, I already had forgotten about this. You see, system parameter three and four. Um, so let's see what do they do. Um, so so this this comes from the system values two. Um, you see this query is without any further restrictions. Uh, let's see what do we have here. I doubt that these are even documented. Uh, uh, so display value. Yeah, I don't know what they are right now. But again, you know, uh, uh, another example that um, how uh, how uh, when you navigate around in V dollar views of Oracle, you'll see uh, new things. So. Uh, Let's uh, just check V dollar system parameter three. Uh, let's search for so I'm just going to the documentation. So let's go to V dollar S. That's where it should be. Oh man, so so V dollar system parameter two is there. It's documented, but three and four, I think, you know, they are not. Right, so lots of undocumented things going on in Oracle, even if it's if the view is a V dollar. If you, if I really want to know, I don't spend time on it right now. But if I wanted to know what exactly is this view doing, well, I don't have to guess. I don't have to guess because I see exactly what is the difference from the query. Right. So system parameter two gets does this. It shows some sort of you know decodes some column value bit, bits here and shows some. Uh, trues and falses and so on, but this just uh, uh, you know shows uh, uh, the raw values. But anyway, so that's not what I, where I wanted to go. I wanted to uh, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, talk about different things, a bit higher level things. Uh, Simon just joined and asked whether uh, there is a way to watch the replay later on. And yes, so I'm actually re actually recording it right now, and uh, 
I hope I hope to upload it um, uh, today. So I'll I'll blog uh, uh, where it is. Okay, so uh, so we had a little. So basically, what I was getting at is that you know at the parameters, all the undocumented parameters. You know we have twenty six hundred of them in this version of Oracle, and the value is the number of the parameters is getting closer to. Uh, uh, 30 uh, or uh, 3000 um, so and maybe in a couple of years we, we will have 5000 or something like that so it's quite a lot right it's actually quite a lot to keep in memory um, so uh, I have a little script called PD um, so which shows me I mean, that's actually a trivial script, a simple script. I mean, um, the, the whole internet is full of such scripts, right? But um, I just wanted to show you what I use every day when I, when I deal with checking these parameter values. So again, so this script uses these X dollars. So therefore, you got to run it as sys, right? Because non-sys users usually can't access X dollars. And you see, it has shown me two documented parameters and one undocumented parameter. And the cool thing is that this X dollar, this X dollar here, it actually has a description column. So whenever you see a new parameter, you can just run PD with its name and you see that what does it mean? You know, of course, it's just one sentence, but in many cases, it's enough to understand what does it mean. If that's not enough, then I take the parameter name and I, I put it to MetaLink and I search in, you know, my Oracle support and I search in bug descriptions as well, because then sometimes I find what they mean. All right. And by the way, you know, I'm not advocating that you should start changing every single parameter here, right? So it's not what this class is, is about. It's about explaining how parameters work and hopefully explaining how, um, why some weird things are happening in Oracle um, uh, related to cursors and recompilation. Anyway, so I can show I can use a uh, percentage here, which would show me all the parameters. Right? For every single parameter, we have the name, its current value in the session level, and the explanation. So that's really like a gold mine. So, and now back to this topic that, that uh, you know, back to the topic of recompilation of the cursor. So let's see where it was. Okay, apparently the cursor number zero has been aged out now. You see only one is left. So uh, because the zero, I used the cursor one uh, later. Uh, so I, if, if I want to create one more cursor, I can just say alter session set optimizer index caching equals, you know, five or whatever different value than any of the previously cached cursors have. And, uh, and um, I run the same query again. So where do it go? All right. And now again, I have two cursors. OK. So two child cursors. So now if you have 20, 2,600 parameters, you know, we have over, over 2,000 parameters. I mean, it would be pretty expensive to store all of them in every child cursor, right? So, uh, uh, so, uh, so actually, Oracle guys have realized it, and they actually have split the parameters into two. Or it's actually not correct to say that they have split anything, but um, uh, uh, there is a. Uh, um, so it's actually technically right to say that. The, the thing that the parameters which, what are stored inside the child cursors, they are actually completely different parameters. I mean, physically they are different parameters, but they just they actually have different numbers and so on internally. But they just happen to have same names mostly. So 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 basically, um, so basically, I'm, where I'm getting at is that. Uh, there are actually parameters stored inside child cursors which don't exist as regular parameters. And I'm going to show you how you kind of measure that. But basically, one of the reasons is that 
you know, there are plenty of parameters like processes and sessions and transactions, you know, SGA target and stuff like that. And these parameters are not, are not optimizer parameters. You know, they don't have anything to do with optimizer. And they don't, you know, some of them don't change anyway, right? So, um, so, so it, it doesn't make sense or there is no need to put all of these 3000 parameters into each cursor. It makes only sense to put the optimizer related parameters into, uh, um, into the, uh, inside the cursor, right? So, and actually starting from some version, somewhere in 10G, I would suspect, 10.2 perhaps, we have new views called V$ SQL. Sorry, let's start. Um, uh, by the way, there is a script called D, which just shows me data dictionary views when I have forgotten what's the exact view name. You know, you don't need to open up the documentation every time you, you have forgotten a view name, you know, you still remember parts of that. And basically starting from 10.2, unless if I'm not mistaken, uh, we have these kind of uh, um, uh, 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 views called V$ something optimizer n. So this is the optimizer environment. So this is basically the, the, the bunch of uh, parameters which affect the execution plan and these are whatever is listed here these are the parameters the parameters which are stored inside each child cursor so you see this query returns only 70 uh, sorry 47 parameters that it, it, this query tells that there are only 47 parameters which are part of optimizer and one Again, that's not the full truth because this view only shows us the documented optimizer parameters. So, uh, um, so by the way, you can run the HTML script like that as well if you expect it to be too wide for the screen. So the documented optimizer parameters are uh, are uh, uh, you know listed here. For example, like parallel execution enabled, optimizer features enabled, and stuff like that, right? You see the current value, you see the default value. What's the default value? And by the way, there is a view called uh, is default or not. You know, if, 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 if this parameter has been changed, you know, in the init aura, because this is the system-wide one, uh, then the is default column there is, is no. So you can actually find out which columns are not default or which parameters are not default at the system wide. Okay. So it only shows us a 47 rows. But you see there is a column called ID. It kind of shows that there are that there are, you know, the last parameter, you know, 47th one displayed actually has some sort of an internal ID 290. So actually, if I want to see the full picture, I should actually find out what is the X dollar table where these uh, values come from or where these rows come from and query that X dollar. So basically what I usually do when I research this kind of new, new views, I just look into V dollar fixed view definition and see what does it show. So basically this is this GV dollar sys optimizer n and this is the view text right so and you see it's it actually selects from this x dollar so it's some query compilation whatever uh, compile environment or some compilation environment uh, and you see there is a where clause where we have these kind of conditions and these are the ones which now filter out you know things which are uh, like like undocumented parameters and so on so if I want to see all of the optimizer environment values, I got to query this X dollar directly. And that's why I have written a script called sysopt. System optimizer environment. So this is the uh, instance wide optimizer environment. And I can just say 
percentage here just list me every parameter which is part of that environment. So you see, actually we have uh, uh, 313 parameters which are part of the optimizer environment in this version. So every single child cursor has values for 313 parameters stored in it, right? Some values, I mean, some things don't take a lot of space actually, you know, because this is just true or false, right? You know, I don't know, maybe it takes only one bit, maybe they have optimized it that well, maybe it takes a byte somewhere, you know, but it's not like, it's not like every parameter takes a hundred bytes or something. They, all parameters tend to take only uh, uh, very little space. Okay. And 300 parameters is still better than 2600, you know, when you store it for in, in that much of data in every child cursor. So whatever parameters are listed here, these are the ones which Oracle checks when you, uh, uh, you know, soft parse a cursor. Oracle will go into library cache and, and find whether there is an existing child cursor and when it finds an existing child cursor then it will check all, all of this, then it will compare all of these 313 parameters and their values, right? Uh, and, and if all of these values match, then it, uh, then it will, um, uh, it will uh, reuse the existing child cursor. But even if one single cursor, uh, even if a single parameter value is different, then it will, um, you know, um, uh, uh, compile a new child cursor. And the V dollar non-shared, and sorry, and the non-shared script should show me the reason why a new one was compiled. Okay, so there are different parameters. So let me just quickly show you this once more. So the optimizer n. So for every SQL cursor, you know this uh, bunch of uh, you know bytes. This is actually what what stores these particular parameter values for every child cursor. So, okay, so basically, let me, let me just um, look into the GV one. So when I look into uh, this optimizer environment views, so there are actually three views here. Sys optimizer en environment shows me the system wide values, right? Sys optimizer environment shows me the session wide values or session, sorry, session level values. See, when I describe it, there is a seed as well. So this is the view which allows me to look in, inside another session and see the parameter values for that other session. So uh, I'm logging on with the new session and let's say, let's alter uh, session set uh, optimizer index caching equals 33, okay? Now I can query this view to see the values of another session. Because when, when, I, when in, this, this, in, in this first session, when I, when I say show parameter or query V dollar parameter, then I will see my own session's values, right? But I wanna see this other session. So, and I've written a little script called sysopt, you know, just like we have a sysopt, we have sysopt which takes the seed as a parameter. So this second session is, you know, has, is 33. Okay, oh, sorry, the second session seed is, uh, you know, 31, 35 here, right? So uh, I'll say this, and I don't, I don't wanna see all of the parameters. I will say, show me only the parameters which have optimizer index in them. Okay, so right now, I went into shared pool and I looked into that other session's optimizer uh, environment uh, parameter values, right? And you see, there is one parameter optimizer index cost adjustment, which is default. You know, it's still default. I haven't changed it from its original value. It's 100 and it's the optimizer index caching is, uh, is uh, uh, where the value is, uh, is not default anymore and the current value is 33. So basically, this is the way you look into another session. 
Uh, but, but this only shows you these 300 something parameter values, which are part of the optimizer environment. So you cannot, uh, you know, let me show everything, right? So you cannot um, look into, into other thing, other uh, parameter value. But that's good, good enough for a start, because when you wanna, when you, when you wanna, the, the main reason why you would want to see some other sessions parameter values is some query execution plan issue, right? And th this is when you want to see optimizer environment values anyway. But yeah, if I, if I, if I use percentage here, then I see all the 312 values. Okay, so, and by the way, this script that I used, you see, this is the C that uses this in clause. I can, I can uh, you know, do this as well, that instead of looking into one session only, I can look into a select seed from V$ session. And maybe add like where username is something or whatever I want. And maybe look into optimizer index um, parameters only. Um, so basically what I, when I do this, you see parameter one will be replaced by this. So this select seed from e session will be actually moved in here, right? And it's, it, it, it will become like a sub query. So this allows me to list, like sh show me all sessions and only, only that parameter value for all sessions. One more reason why do you, why do you use SQL plus and scripts like that, you know, it, it can be very flexible. And I can immediately see that, hey, there are two sessions where this value is, is not default, right? Seed 631 and seed this, and I see their values. You know, sometimes I might wanna see, you know, who else has set the values in some login trigger or in application, right? If it's a login trigger, it's easy because you, as a DBA, you, you can look into inside this, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, login trigger text. But if, if the application itself in the, in the Java code alters these parameters, then the DBA doesn't have control over it, other than disabling the, removing the alter session privilege. Uh, Martin asked that, isn't this data, this data visible in V$ SES optimizer environment? Uh, yes, Martin, so this is, uh, this data what you see here is also visible in this V$ view, but the V$ view only shows you the documented, you know, 47 documented optimizer uh, parameters. But the underlying X$ what I use in my script, this X$ one, this shows me the uh, undocumented optimizer environment as well. And when I diagnose or troubleshoot something, I wanna see both because often somebody has changed has read an article in the in internet and has changed an undocumented parameter, right? So uh, the X dollar shows me everything. Okay. So this is what the optimizer environment is. And now when I research this, then um, mm, So, uh, so Luis, yes, V dollar, uh, the V dollar views only show documented parameters. So it, when it's a, um, a, you know, SUS optimizer environment or SES optimizer environment, they only show the documented ones. Just do the count star from both in your test database and you see the difference. The X dollars will return much more uh, rows. And there is a third one. So when I go back to this, there is a third one. Uh, v$ SQL optimizer environment. And that's very interesting because, you know, when you query the optimizer environment like this, I mean, this is the binary representation. I don't know how to read this, right? I could start reverse engineering this or whatever and, you know, try to figure out which byte exactly is which and then so on, you know, by playing around and setting the different values and so on but I don't need that really. So uh, because V$ SQL optimizer environment is the one which is able to extract data from this binary structure in a human readable form. 
And again, I don't use the V dollar because it only shows me the documented parameters. I'm using the underlying X dollar. So there is a script called um, uh, SQL opt. The first parameter is what SQL ID I'm interested in. Uh, the second parameter is which child numbers I'm interested in. I'm saying that, you know, show me all children. And now the last one is that which parameter values I want to see. Let's, let's say I want to see optimizer index, wherever I have optimizer index. <laughs> Oops, the cursor was aged out. It was here, you see, it was, it, it was here, but this, this query was compiled and it caused this one cursor to be aged out. So, so uh, um, let me just, uh, uh, for completeness, I'm I just run this once more, let's see. Uh, Just set the different value. Okay, now I have two cursors back. So I have two cursors, child cursors, and of course in, in real life you may have 20 or 200, or if you hit some bug or fundamental problem, you maybe even 20,000, right? So that's a, a topic for, you know, what I actually cover in my class, you know, how to troubleshoot this too many uh, child cursors issue issues a little bit of advertising as well into this two hours okay uh, so anyway so uh, uh, I've just so what this this uh, script does it accesses this x dollar table and this then you know Oracle when you query that x dollar Oracle actually goes through library cache it finds all these SQL IDs all child cursors and it extracts these parameter values in a human readable form from this binary structure and I do see that, you know, optimizer is index caching was not, is not default. You see, it's default is no. So this the other parameter is default, so nobody has changed it, right? So that's cool. But the cursor number zero ha has this value in cursor number one has this value for this parameter, right? So, so this actually allows me to kind of, um, uh, you know, complete the picture sort of that if I you know if I see that there is one session which is running some query and suddenly has compiled a new query plan then I can query query v dollar sql opt to see you know what what is the old value what are the old values for example uh, uh, for the parameters in existing cursors and uh, and uh, what is the value what that has changed you know, in that particular cursor, what my slow session is using. So I can query sysopt. I can query sysopt. And, you know, let's say my slow session is 31, 35. And, uh, and I know that, hey, this parameter has changed here. You know, it's, it's not default and it's different from the previous. I can just query that and see. Uh, you know, so see what see this other session. I, I think in my case it's not a good example because uh, that session thirty one thirty five, which is here, it's actually not running anything right now. So uh, this particular session eleven, where I set the value to eleven, is is my own one at the moment. But basically, I mean, um, um, you know, uh, um, there are many other reasons why Oracle does not uh, reuse an old cursor and compiles a new one. There are lots of reasons and you know, non-shared script shows most of them. But if the reason is um, optimizer mismatch, so if the reason is optimizer mismatch, then it means that there is a, a, a difference in some optimizer parameters. And this is when you can, uh, you know, query uh, SQL opt to, to actually see what are the optimizer parameter values in that particular cursor and in the previous cursor, for example, and you compare it with uh, what is the same optimizer parameter in some in that session which has the problem with says opt, right? Okay, so uh, um, uh, so so much about that.
it is possible to see other sessions parameters, but only these ones which belong to this optimizer environment. Uh, at some point of time, I will. Uh, so uh, there is one question from uh, GG. Uh, um, uh, is Sysopt working with Oracle 9.2? It doesn't work with 9.2, I think. It's, it's 10.2 onwards. I don't think these V dollars or X dollars existed in, uh, in 9.2. And I think they are not there in 9.1 either. Sorry, in, in 10.1 either. But, but maybe, maybe they are. I haven't checked um, that. The oldest version, what I have in, in, available is 10.2. So the rest is history. Um, or maybe I'm just too lucky I haven't had to work with 9i for a while. Um, so there may be some way to use oral debug to dump the parameters. I gotta, I'll look into that later, but that, that would be more hacking already. So, so and this, when I researched this, I, um, one of the things what I was wondering is that, so that are the optimizer environment parameters a subset of all the parameters, right? So uh, let's look into this. So um, so sorry. Um, so these are the system-wide um, optimizer environment optimizer environment parameters, and these are all, you know, session or 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 the regular Oracle parameters, so to speak. Okay, so and when I did this, uh, when I did this, so this is where the na parameter name is. I, I, I did this. So let's take all the parameters, all the optimizer environment parameters, right? Minus all of these parameters. So so this is where the parameters name is. Select K S P P I N M from so I used minus so so these are all the parameters which are part of optimizer environment but which are not regular parameters so basically you know I can just just do this let's take one of the parameters you know show parameter optimizer mode hinted well there is no such parameter or i can query the x dollar kspi right there is no such parameter so this is what i meant when i when i spoke about when i wrote about that the different types of parameters so actually there are some optimizer environment parameters which don't have a corresponding uh, you know, instance parameter. So, uh, um, you know, some sort of undocumented ones even, and some sort of, so to speak, documented ones. So, uh, for example, uh, well, you know, um, uh, uh, when, I, when I do this, so uh, I can say alter session set optimizer features enable something. Or I would say this, select uh, optimizer, optimizer features enable, uh, let's say uh, uh, 10, 2, 0, 1. I don't know whether it's the valid syntax, so might need some adjustment, uh, but uh, count star from dual. All right, so, uh, so let's look into this SQL ID this child number, let's take any child and say, uh, what did we look for? Uh, optimizer. Uh, okay, I, I think I have, I have the hint in, in, in valid, uh, the hint wasn't recognized. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay, you, you know, this is 11G. Starting from 11G, you can see what hints we have. Because first we want to validate which whether the hint name was was correct. So there is V dollar SQL hint in 11G. So 11.1 onwards. So I can query hint optimizer optimizer feature enable features enable. 
Well, that, that should be correct. Uh, I may need to put this here. Let's see whether that was the uh, issue. Still nothing. Uh, so I wonder whether I have done something. I did a little mistake here. So I changed this syntax. So this actually means that when I change the query text, you know, query text changes, then the SQL ID changes as well. So I should run SQL opt on this. Aha. Okay, so let me just go back to this, um, this original uh, uh, query. So the first, the first thing what I did uh, was that I wanted to see whether there are, are any parameters in the optimizer environment which don't exist as regular parameters. And yes, there are. For example, like some sort of this, this optimizer features hinted. So, and I just, uh, uh, you see, when I ran a query like this uh, with the correct syntax, let me just uh, run it once more. You see, in a previous example, this was when I used the wrong uh, hint syntax and the, the wrong, wrong hint was ignored, the value was just zeros. But, but apparently, when I do hint these optimizer features like this, then uh, this hint causes a special parameter in optimizer environment to be set. And CBO probably uses that. So CBO probably checks that if this special parameter in optimizer environment is set, then it ignores the session level uh, optimizer features enable parameter. 